The Syriac Church of Antioch is part of the Eastern Catholic Churches, that is to say the churches that belong to the Christian East and share a spiritual wealth with their brothers of the Orthodox Church while living in full communion with the Pope. Its official liturgical languages are Syriac and Arabic. This church is called Syriac Church of Antioch because it was in Antioch where the apostles Peter and Paul, the disciples of Jesus, were first called Christians. The fathers of the Syriac Church of Antioch are St. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, as traditionally held by the Syriac Catholic Patriarchs, and St. Ephraim, commonly called the Syrian. The origins of this church date back to the Council of Chalcedon, the fourth ecumenical council of the Christian Church that affirmed the presence of two natures in Christ, divine and human. Like other Eastern communities, the Syriac Catholic Church rejected this council's assertion, claiming that Christ only had the divine nature, the Monophysite heresy. Therefore, the Syriac Church of Antioch was separated from Rome, but retained its liturgy in the Syriac language as well as its ancient traditions, while the parallel Greek-speaking church eventually embraced the Byzantine rite. Thus, the Syriac Orthodox Church of the Antioch tradition was born. After the consecration of Jacob Baradaius in 543 as Bishop of Edessa, this church began to play a public role and to establish a more organized church structure. Contacts with the Jesuit and Capuchin missionaries in the 17th century later created a split within the Syriac Orthodox Church, giving birth to the Syriac Catholic Church. And so, in 1662, the influence of these Catholic missionaries led to the election of a bishop favorable to union with Rome to the patriarchal seat. However, his death triggered violent arguments that led to the division of the Syriac Church into two communities, where one remained in communion with Rome and elected in 1782 its own patriarch, Michael Jarway, Metropolitan of Aleppo, creating a parallel hierarchy. Until 1929, the patriarchal seat of the Syriac Catholics was located in Aleppo in northern Syria. But the restriction of freedom imposed by the Ottoman government forced the Syriac Catholic Patriarch to transfer to Mardin in southern Turkey. Then, after the massacres perpetrated by the Ottomans during the First World War, the Syriac Catholic Church found refuge in Lebanon. So, since 1920, the Syriac Catholic Patriarch of Antioch, currently his Beatitude Ignatius Joseph Yunan III, has lived in Beirut. The Vicariate of Lebanon, Turkey, and Jerusalem are under his jurisdiction. Other Vicariates exist in several countries worldwide, serving the faithful of the Diaspora, including in the United States. The Syriac Church of Antioch has about 200,000 faithful. The Church in the Holy Land is represented by the Patriarchal Exarchate of Jerusalem, established in 1890, and has two parishes in Jerusalem and Bethlehem, and a parish in Amman. Currently, the Patriarchal Exarch is Bishop Gregory Pierre Melki. He resides north of the Damascus Gate and attends to a community composed of barely a hundred families, scattered between Jerusalem, Jaffa, Lod, Haifa, and Bethlehem. In July 1985, the community consecrated the new Patriarchal Church in Jerusalem dedicated to St. Thomas, the Apostle to the peoples of Syria and India. For historical reasons, dating back to the time of the Ottomans, the Syriac Catholic Church in Israel is one of the Christian communities to enjoy civil rights. The ecclesiastical courts of these communities have jurisdiction over civil status issues, like marriage and divorce. In recent decades, ever closer ecumenical relationships have been forged between the two Syriac churches, Orthodox and Catholic. They share the same membership in the Antiochian ritual tradition, 
in pastoral care and the administration of three mutual sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, and anointing of the sick. Receiving the new Syriac Catholic Patriarch of Antioch in audience on January 23, 2009, Benedict XVI recalled the faithful of this church to be sowers of peace, especially in the Holy Land, Iraq, and Lebanon. My desire is that in the East, where the announcement of the Gospel came from, the Christian communities may continue to live and witness to their faith, as they have done over the centuries at the same time with adequate support given for the pastoral care of all those who have settled elsewhere so that they can remain fruitfully tied to their religious roots.